this will be series three in, uh, from the dungeon. So uh, if you'd like to follow me, we'll go back here and uh, found some interesting uh, items back here. This happens to be an old tabletop uh, from uh, our, our, our show days, and we used to do uh, a lot of the big shows. This, we would display product on this. This would uh, sit on top of a, a four foot by four foot uh, square table that we made, and uh, this is how we displayed our product at a lot of the bike shows we used to go to. And probably a lot of people might remember it. It's pretty cool, pretty cool display item. So here we go. We're Going back, uh, I call this the deep bowels here of the dungeon. Uh, but there's something really, really cool and interesting back here that we discovered, and uh, uh, certainly we like to share it with everybody. So, well, after climbing all over that stuff that was back there, it reminds me of the pickers that I watch on television. Anyway, this was the original. Uh, divide, it's called the dividing head that we use to actually make the original spindles for our uh, the first uh, retro cranks that we did, the box cranks. Uh, what we would do here is uh, we would load a piece of three foot material in here and uh, into the jaws here and the uh, this here is what they call a dividing head so you can set these little arms that are on here where you can turn this and uh, on the axle what we did is we did 48 serrations on this so you would set this little uh, scissor item here where you'd make one turn and that would be one of the 48 serrations for the axle. And what we do we'd load this in here we would put this over to a center like this this particular head was mounted on either a vertical bridge port or a horizontal mill which is sort of a bridge port turned sideways. And the uh, uh, cutter was a 90 degree cutter is what it was and this was mounted in the spindle on the machine. This cutter looks like this here. That cutter would come down here and you'd move the table across and this would cut one spline. You would take this here, you would go ahead and turn this a revolution and cut another spline and that's how the original axle here was actually done. After it was finished the splines were done we went ahead and we uh, take the piece out of the out of the dividing head take it to the saw cut off the piece and it would go to the lathe then where it would be faced off and then threads put in the end of it uh, for the attachment where the cranks went on to hold the cranks onto the spindle. This was a very very labor-intensive way of making uh, of, uh, these axles at first. And if you happen to own one of these with a set of cranks, uh, we made very, very few of these because it was very time-consuming. So what I did is we uh, finally wound up buying a gear hopper, uh, which uh, does it considerably faster anyway. So that's sort of the story behind uh, the 48 spline axle and uh, how we did them and like I said it was very labor intensive and we finally found a way to be able to do it that uh, kept with up with our production that we had on our cranks at that time. So uh, when uh, we were looking for the dividing head uh, which <laughs> we, we knew we had it we didn't know where it was but we finally found it as uh, we discussed before but this axle was in right next to the dividing head and this was actually the one of the original actual axles that we used for a fit uh, so every axle that came off there we could use this as the sample fit for the one that came off the machine to make sure everything fit properly uh, where the cranks wouldn't be loose on the spindle so that is the original sample that came uh, off that machine uh, and was used as a uh, pattern sort of for uh, all the rest of them that we did so I hope this was very interesting to you uh, this was quite a find I didn't even think this thing was still around so uh, uh, enjoy it and uh, look forward to uh, episode number four coming up here soon and uh, thank you